They called it the greatest marine disaster in aquarium history. What started as humanity's obsession with caging the ocean's apex predator became a 70-year trail of death, destruction, and one of the most shocking public executions ever witnessed. For decades, aquariums around the world have successfully displayed hundreds of shark species. From nurse sharks to hammerheads, these predators thrive behind glass, drawing millions of visitors each year. But there's one glaring absence. The most famous shark of all, the Great White. This isn't by choice. It's because every single attempt to keep these monsters in captivity has ended in complete disaster. Today, we're diving into the dark history of Great White Shark captivity. A story of failed experiments, massive financial losses, and the brutal reality of what happens when you try to cage nature's most perfect killing machine. From the first attempt in 1955 to the final failure in 2016, this is the untold story of humanity's most expensive mistake. In 1955, marine land of the Pacific in Los Angeles became the first to try. A six-foot juvenile great white was caught near the coast and dumped into their tank. It was dead within 24 hours. Six years later, Waikiki Aquarium in Hawaii tried with a massive 13-footer. Same result, dead in a day. By 1968, four different aquariums had made attempts. Not one shark survived past 48 hours. Then came Australia's manly marine land, and they were about to make history for all the wrong reasons. In 1968, a seven-foot great white caught in fishing nets was transported to their facility. The journey was brutal. The shark was tied to a fishing boat for an hour, then thrown into a truck tank and bounced around for 45 minutes before being carried up several flights of stairs to the aquarium. Against all odds, this shark not only survived the transport, but became the first captive great white to actually eat food. For 10 record-breaking days, it swam and fed in its 250,000-gallon tank, surrounded by turtles and other fish. Crowds flocked to see the impossible, a living great white shark in captivity. But then, something terrifying happened. Divers who entered the tank to clean and maintain it reported that the shark was following them, watching them, sizing them up as potential prey. The playful curiosity had turned into predatory stalking behavior. Faced with a dangerous seven-foot killing machine and no safe way to remove it from the tank, Manly Marineland made an unthinkable decision. They announced they would kill the shark and sold tickets to the public to watch. Hundreds of people gathered as divers entered the tank with underwater guns called powerheads. It took seven shots to finally kill the shark as horrified spectators watched. The 1975 release of the movie, Jaws, changed everything. Suddenly, every major aquarium in America wanted their own great white shark attraction. The potential profits were enormous. Who wouldn't pay to see a real-life Jaws up close? SeaWorld San Diego tried repeatedly through the late 1970s and 1980s. They brought in multiple great whites, each one dying within days of arrival. The sharks would stop eating, struggle to swim properly, and eventually die from stress and exhaustion. San Francisco's Steinhardt Aquarium went all in on the Great White Dream. They created a specialized team called the Steinhardt White Acquisition Team, complete with custom transport trucks fitted with temperature controls and IV fluid systems to keep sharks alive during transport. They spent thousands of dollars on each attempt. Their best effort was a seven-foot female they nicknamed Sandy, who survived just three days before they had to release her back into the ocean. After decades of failure and millions of dollars wasted, most aquariums gave up. But in 2004, the Monterey Bay Aquarium in California decided to revolutionize great white captivity with a completely new approach. They built the ultimate shark habitat, a massive one million gallon tank shaped like an egg, 35 feet deep and 90 feet long. 
The construction of this Outer Bay exhibit cost $110 million. But the real innovation wasn't just the size. They created a 4 million gallon holding pen right in the ocean where captured sharks could recover from the stress of being caught before being moved to the aquarium. They also designed custom transport systems with oxygen sensors, video cameras, and mobile life support for the nine hour journey from Southern California, where the sharks were caught, up to the aquarium in Northern California. On September 15, 2004, they made history. A four-foot juvenile great white not only survived the transport, but began swimming normally and eating regularly. For 198 days, over six months, the impossible became reality. The aquarium's attendance jumped 30% as people flocked to see the first successfully captive great white shark. Over the next six years, Monterey Bay housed five more great white sharks. The results varied. Some lasted just 11 days, others survived over five months. But each one suffered the same problems. Stress, injuries from hitting the walls, and abnormal behavior. The final shark they kept in 2011 was released after 55 days, but satellite tracking showed it died shortly after being returned to the wild. So why is it impossible to keep these apex predators alive in captivity? The answer lies in their unique biology and behavior that makes them perfectly adapted for life in the open ocean, but completely unsuited for life in a tank. First, great whites are what scientists call obligate ram ventilators. Unlike most fish that can pump water over their gills by opening and closing their mouths, great whites must swim constantly with their mouths open to force water through their gills. If they stop swimming, they stop breathing. It's that simple. Second, they're nomadic predators on an unimaginable scale. Scientists have tracked great whites traveling incredible distances. One shark was recorded traveling 12,400 miles in just nine months, swimming from South Africa all the way to Australia and back. No tank, no matter how large, can replicate the endless ocean these creatures need to survive. Third, their sensory system works against them in captivity. Great whites have an incredible ability called electroreception. They can detect the tiny electrical fields produced by all living things. This system evolved to help them hunt in the vast open ocean, but in an aquarium filled with electrical equipment like pumps, filters, and lights, their senses become completely overloaded. They literally cannot see the glass walls until they crash into them at full speed. The financial cost of these failures was enormous. Individual sharks cost up to $20,000 just to purchase from fishermen, plus thousands more per day in food, medical care, and specialized staff. When you add up decades of failed attempts across multiple institutions, the total investment reached tens of millions of dollars, all for animals that would inevitably suffer, injure themselves, and die. The final attempt was made in Japan in 2016. The Okinawa Churaumi Aquarium acquired an 11.5-foot adult great white, the largest ever put on display. It was placed in a 185,000-gallon tank, much smaller than Monterey Bay's facility. The result was predictable. The shark died within three days, making it the last great white to be held in captivity anywhere in the world. Today, no aquarium on Earth houses a living great white shark. After 70 years of attempts, over 30 different sharks, and tens of millions of dollars spent, the failure rate remains at 100%. Every single great white that has ever been placed in captivity has either died or had to be released due to health problems. The great white shark has ruled the oceans for 450 million years, surviving multiple mass extinctions and evolving into the perfect oceanic predator. Perhaps the lesson we've learned is that some creatures are simply too wild, too specialized, and too magnificent to ever be caged. The great white belongs in one place, the endless blue ocean where it has always been king. <laughs>